But let's talk a little bit about the application of these drills. In the stances, let's start with the basic. The basic idea of the stances is, of course, to generate balance and generate power in movement. Now, when you think about generating power and movement through stances, you must immediately throw out the entire concept, the thing that drives me crazy when I see beginning instructors do this. Stop getting fixated on the direction of the toes and exactly how far apart your feet are. And it must be exactly 2.039% more than twice your shoulder distance. And if your toes are more than 7%, it out it's wrong or they must be 45 in the natural horse stance all of that gets thrown away the instant you say let's talk about how stances develop power because in order to develop power you have to move and if you are moving your feet are turning and if your feet are turning focusing on the angle of your toes starts to get a little silly so if we begin with balance, that's great. But balance by itself is not going to help you in any meaningful way. So, Sia Miles is going to show you what I mean. Sia Miles wants to have plenty of side balance for an H stance. Come back, Sia Miles. I'm not ready for you to be in an H stance yet. Sia Miles is going to use an H stance to balance. Oh, that's nice. Look at his nice deep stance and his balance and his toes pointed straight ahead and his knees bent and his back straight. That's great. What incredible balance he has. Simon, I'll do that again. What great stay there. What great balance he has. Wham! I win the fight. Way to have balance. Congratulations. Stances by themselves, just on balance, pointless. Yay, you. You got a great stance. Let's spend six years working on our H stance. It'll be perfect, and no one will ever be able to push you over until they kick you in the groin. Okay, that's the beginning of stances. And so you want to train and you want to have your balance. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, to have that balance. I'm not saying don't train that. I'm saying understand that everything has multiple applications, and in the real world, there are no frozen moments in time. So if you get hung up on but toes must be directly forward because Saya G said it's an H stance, not a horse stance. I don't want my toes turned out at a 45 in a natural stance. That's what other martial arts do, not ours. We want to turn our toes in, push our knees out, and lock in, which we do, by the way. We want our toes pointed directly straight ahead and pushing our knees out because that locks us into the floor. By turning your toes straight ahead and getting deep and then not letting your knees collapse in but pushing them out, you can drop your weight and feel it push into the ground. You are connecting yourself strongly to the earth by keeping those toes pointed straight ahead. And we love that. Real good balance. But the reason we want to lock into the earth is so we can push off of it. So that we can use the stance to develop power. And as soon as we do that, a toe is going to start turning. Folks, you're going to have to turn. You're going to have to pivot on the ball of your foot somehow. And that's the second application of these forms. The first application, 50-50 weight, straight up and down, strong balance. Sai Miles, show me an L stance, 50-50, perfect balance. Drop it deep. He drops deep. He doesn't want to fall back. He doesn't want to fall forward. He's got 50% of his weight on each leg. He's really low, and he's got lots of forward and backward and side to side. It's an L stance. It's the universal stance. It helps with balance all different directions. In a good L stance, you've got forward, you've got some slight side to side because you can shift this leg and this leg sideways, not just front and back. It's a very nice stance. Two. So let's talk about the application of developing power in our stances. What do we mean when we say developing power in our stances? We're talking about movement. We're talking about driving with the leg muscles. So, we talk about certain things. Simon, just stand there. We talk about certain things. Push a guy, he goes into an H stance. Push him from the side. H stance, nice and good, okay? Got plenty of balance, can move and get out of the way. But if Simon Miles is turned sideways and I'm facing him, and Simon Miles wants to use his H stance, Simon Miles can step right into me with this leg and get in deep. He can attack in into an H stance. Look at his 
Look at his arm is bent and chambered and cocked, but by turning his hips and torso, we learn about this in the, in the square form, how to aggressively attack with deep stances. Simon's turn and face me. I can step forward and turn into an H stance and use my body to upset Simon Miles. I can step and match parts of his body because I'm low, right? Because I'm doing deep stances. I can step right into his leg and by turning into an H, just turning into an H, it moves him. Okay, now I don't want to do that with my hands down and just let him beat me up. <laughs> okay, but developing power, I can develop power in my knee. I can develop power in my hip. I can develop power in my shoulder. I can develop power in my elbow. I can develop power in my fist by stepping in and turning into an H. Okay, stepping in and turning into an H. Stepping in and turning into my H. Okay, developing power through that deep stance. But you notice my toes are the last thing I'm worried about at that point, right? No, they're seven degrees off center. Oh no, my stance is horrible. My master will never promote me. Yeah, don't worry about it, okay? Worry about balance and power. Obviously, this is better. But if they turn out a little bit, that's okay because you're gonna be turning anyway. You're gonna be shifting and leaning. Our stances are not static. So let's talk about different ways to use each of these stances. Let's talk about that H stance. We were kind of going through it already. There's a static step away. There's the step in in terms of your H. And there is the reality of facing me. He can step back and turn into his H, especially if he thinks I'm going to attack him. He can step back into an H stance, separating himself, removing some of his target zones, because I was about to hit here. And now he's turned his, his side. He's protected all of this by moving it to the side. He's deep, but he's not 50-50. He's still getting back just to be safe so that that, oh, that foot can come up and he can keep moving. So that's another application of the H stance. It's not just to step out and balance. It's not static, okay? The N stance, we always teach our children, face the front, side mouse. The N stance, we always say, I push you from behind and you step into your N stance, right? Your toes are pointed forward. It's, it's, an, it's an offensive movement. You just step in, big, deep stances, locking your heels down nice and deep. But this is static. If you're focused on just the toes all the time, or they must point forward, so as you said, yes, they must. However, let's talk about the truth. I step forward, I'm gonna turn and punch you with my short punch. My toes are gonna to pivot, okay? My body's gonna pivot. If I'm here and my toes are pointing towards the camera and I'm throwing a short punch, they pivot on the balls of the feet and my punch comes out. That's how I develop the power. I don't develop the power by locking my toes and never moving again. That's how I develop balance but the power comes from movement, okay? So how can we use the end stance in a different way than just stepping forward? Well, we like to, I like to say the end stance is one of our secrets. We like to fight with the end stance because it's mobility based. You can shrink your stance a little bit. You can move and you can bring your big powerful weapons from the back to bear linearly. We don't have to turn sideways and turn to bring these in. They're already presented. Yes, it offers a wider target zone, you must admit. However, with your end stance, using it offensively, the thing about an end stance is I can continue to shift straight back, which we don't want to do, but I can, I can walk backwards, walk backwards at an angle, I can walk backwards at a circle in an arc, right? I can do it forwards, stepping out at the 45, working out here, okay? So the offensive applications of this deep end stance provide a lot of stability and a lot of power, but they also provide a lot of mobility even in deep stances. So that's one of the reasons we love the end stance so much. Another reason we love the end stance a lot in American Anthwadi Bando is because it replaces the T stance. Okay? In traditional Nima time, the primary stance is the T. We don't even have a T. We don't have a T for one very important reason. The T stance is the primary stance because the primary theory and application in Myanmar is sword. It's sword. This is a fencing stance. It's a fencing stance because when Simon Miles is using the other technique, application, and theory 
of our Myanmar martial arts, what's one of the things he's going to do? Take what's given. What's given right now? My leg. Right? What's given right now? My leg. In stance, L stance, T stance, doesn't matter. This is the closest thing to him, this leg. But in a T stance, the shuffle is easier. The shuffle is easier from a T stance. Also, from a T stance, you are essentially in a wide cat. It's very easy to go back to your cat. And they use that front leg defensively for kicking, okay? And also as a distractor kick to set up other techniques. We don't. So we've replaced the T essentially with an N. When they use an L or a deep T and they creep their T out, we use an L. When they're using a T, we're using an N. When they turn their T and turn their body to the side, we just go to H, okay? Because we don't use the T. But there's your stances, all right? So you can think about your stances as stepping in deep and getting close to somebody, okay? So a lot of it comes with, one of the things we do is, you know the crescent step? You know what's great with an in stance crescent step? Face me, side mouse, put one foot forward. I don't care which one. There you go. We both have our left foot forward right now. If I want to do something really nice with him, when I'm going to close in and we're going to start grappling, my crescent step into an in stance does this. And now I've actually trapped his leg. I'm on his knee, I'm trapping here, and I've got an easy throw over my leg, okay? So this, this crescent step into a deep end stance, attacking, puts my leg behind his, and if I just settle and turn, I'm gonna throw him right over my own left, okay? Especially as long as I've got the trap or the grapple, as long as I'm able to get my hands on. Okay, and we're gonna talk more about the difference between far away and closing. One of the things we need to recognize is that a self-defense situation, ladies and gentlemen, self-defense does not happen from here. This is not self-defense. If we're this far away, self-defense is running away. That's self-defense. This is consensual fighting. Whole different thing. We don't teach consensual fighting. That's sport or stupid, your choice. It just depends on which one you're doing. If you're in the ring and following rules of sport, if you're out there pounding one back and going to next Saturday night, well, then you're just stupid. Okay. All right. Or 21, which I guess yeah. is the same thing sometimes. So, um, so that's consensual fighting. Whole different thing. If you've got time to fight out here, that's fine. Fine. I'm not going to tell you not to. Whatever. Okay. I'm going to tell you that's not self-defense. Self-defense is this. Self-defense is trouble, 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 crap. Now we're in self-defense zone because I want to hurt you, so I'm not going to let you run away. So I'm going to get this close, and I'm going to push you, or I'm going to grab you, or I'm going to sucker punch you, or I'm going to turn away and then turn back. That's self-defense. And many, many times in self-defense, the proper answer is to close, not separate. Close, not separate. All in, not all out. When it comes time for self-defense, one of our core concepts is all in, right? You're always all out. You're always all out. I don't fight. I'm out. I'm out of the picture. I'm out. Until he doesn't let me get out. And once he doesn't let me get out, I'm all in. Because this is a way to get beat up. Wow, this is a bad idea. I was trying to get away and drop into a really nice H stance so he couldn't pull me over. No. Instead, if he grabs me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to step in into my end stance and jam him up here, right? Tuck my head in here and grab him, and now we're in a whole different thing. Put my head over here so that that hand that's about to hit me can't clock me in the back of the head. Or I'm gonna do this, and wrap his hand and step in. Because wrapping his hand, you can't really see it, but I wrapped his hand, okay? And I stepped right in between his groin. So I've got all sorts of things. He grabbed me, thank you, I grabbed you. Now I can start doing anything. Remember I said turn to an H, I'll move him? Turn to an H. I just turned to an H and I broke his balance, okay? That's application. Different ways to use deep stances because there are no frozen moments in time. So as soon as we start with the what if, well, what if you get into your H stance and he kicks you in the groin? Well, yeah, he's going to if you just get in an H stance and say, hey, kick me in the groin, but that's not how life works. In a self-defense situation, it works like this. You're a bad guy, I'm grab you, right? Yeah, right? It all happens like that, fast. 
There's no what if, okay? Because there's, well, I should say, there's infinite what ifs. That's the whole point. You don't know what's going to happen, okay? Train to turn reaction into action and win and then get away. So that's what we talk about. We're talking about different ways to use your stances. I can drop 50-50. I can keep my back straight and I can work my balance. But I can also shift and do other things. A block, okay? A strip. And we're gonna get into that too. How deep stances help us get away from in close. All right, that's coming up in just a second. Let's talk about stepping. Stepping's rather self-explanatory. This isn't gonna take a lot of time. So, so stepping, the secret to stepping is there isn't one step. That's the secret. When we step, side step, side step, side step, side step. We're working on distancing and timing and explosive movement. But really, it should be side step, back step, back step, back step, side step, side step, back step. That's what it is, okay? That's the real application we're talking about. Don't stop moving. Never stop moving. You should be light on your feet. You should be mobility-based until such time as you can be, right? So let's suppose Simon's goes to grab me. And I just knock it away and move. That's great. Suppose I had the time to do that. But I might not. He might actually get a hold of me. He might actually grab my hands. If I go, whoa, what are you doing? And he grabs my wrist. Okay? There's all sorts of things that might happen at that point. And like I said, that's where self-defense tends to begin. It tends to begin right here. It doesn't tend to begin from out here. Okay? Out here is de-escalation time. Out here is removal time. When it comes time for physical self-defense, usually you're starting here. 